Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. I have with me author of Recruiter Guy's Guide to Finding a Job, Recruiter Guy Bill Humbert. Hey Joe, Hello. how are you? I'm well, sir. How are you? Very well. How was your weekend? It was awesome. Enjoyed the July 4th? Oh yeah, I was out volunteering as crowd control. control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what a, at an interesting spot. Where are we at? In front of the No Name Saloon in Oshucks. There you so go. crowd control there is kind of an oxymoron. Yeah, kind of fun right there. <laughs> it is Did fun. Did you have a good time? Oh, it was great. Yeah, yeah, a lot of good people. Oh, was, yeah. They yeah. liked it. They love their 4th of July. Uh, we, we love yes. our 4th of July. I say no one does the 4th quite like Park City. I, I agree, and I'm a D.C. kid, so... There you go. Yes, no, I love our 4th of July. Indeed. Well, hey, uh, one of the things that we sort of alluded to before getting on the air here is that uh, a lot of people are pretty unhappy with their job. In fact, the Gallup poll said that something in the order of 50% of people adhor going to work. They don't want to be there at all. Right. I guess I'm really not surprised to see this, because I think anytime if you've got a time clock, you probably don't want to be there. That's, oh, yeah. that's been my opinion anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's unless you love what you do. You gotta really like it. But you know, that's that percentage of people is very small and, and human resource circles today. Uh, employee engagement is a huge, huge issue. Yeah. How do we improve employee engagement? How do you make people happy? You right. know, especially if they're just inherently not happy with what they're doing. That's right. Yeah. So wow. it's it's very it's a very tough subject, and it's you know managers have to be taught how to make people happy. Well, this is why we see so many people changing careers, and we've heard numbers before that some that on average people have changed careers between two and four times in their lifetime, mm -hmm. which is significant. We've heard numbers as high as seven. Uh, I, that one is hard to wrap your head around. I don't know that you'd ever really get good at anything if you could, ever, you know, go to all of them. But the point is this: there there are a lot of people who are unhappy and looking to move, and the question is is how they go about doing that and when it makes sense and how, you know, all the different things you should think about before you engage in such a huge change in your life. Yeah, you know, um, for people who are unemployed, especially long-term unemployed, this is a perfect time to do it. Right, doesn't you know, hurt to do that. You know, so why not try it now? Um, for people who are in the job um, and not happy or worse, hate their job, why not start exploring different things that you can do that maybe you might love as opposed to hate. So that's where this first list comes into play, making a list of things that you do personally and professionally. That's correct. Um, for all of you folks in Park City, it's really important to know that there's going to be one item on that list that you can't have because it's on my list. But <laughs> um, make a list of everything that you do well, both professionally and personally. And then go back through that list, or both those lists, and wash through them and put an asterisk next to the things that you enjoy doing that you do well. And this list should include some hobbies too, right? It, absolutely. Hobbies okay. or, you know, anything that you enjoy, even if you enjoy gardening. You know, just any hobbies, anything that might apply because there's going to be skills involved in those hobbies right. that you might not be thinking about. So, um, so, you know, so use that list to identify the things you do well and then the things that you enjoy doing, and then you work back to the hobbies. Now, speaking of that hobby, you've got a brother-in-law who did exactly this. He looked at what he liked doing, he looked at the things that he does that are fun, and one of them included one of his hobbies, and he took that to the nth degree. And he's now he's happy, too. He's, he's happy. He, you know, Paul is a great guy. Um, he, Linda, my wife, might have some issues with Paul because when they were younger, she had long hair, and he was building airplane models, and he'd sneak up behind her and go, bing, <laughs> and grab wow. one of her hair, and then tie it up, tie the model up, put it. Yeah. <laughs> and Cheap. <laughs> exactly. Cheap twine. Yeah. Right and so then um, he went into the Air Force. After the Air Force, he was going to modeling conventions and displaying his models. Ended up taking a job as an editor for Fine Scale Modeling Magazine. Wow. And so, you know, he, he then had another hobby, and it was playing bass guitar. And um, he ended up having a collection of Rick and Rickenbacker guitars. And he was retiring from Fine Scale Modeler. And he wrote this book, The Rickenbacker Electric Bass, 50 Years of 
Rock's bottom. <laughs> and so awesome. and so he he graduated from fine scale modeler and has become an author and an expert on Rickenbacker. That's quite a career he's carved out. But that's really what he did. Just like we were talking about it's that's sort of carving out a career, isn't it? It is. You find some things you like and then you figure out a way to make that be something you can do for a living. That's right. You know, wow. so if you're a logistics person, who may need logistics people? Well, in the nonprofit world, Red Cross, right? Um, Utah Food Bank. You know, so be creative. There's ways that you can apply the skill that you have outside of where you are today. Now, we've heard this before from, you know, you, you see this typically as a, an important part of looking for a job with anyone. And that's why LinkedIn is so important. And that's making a list of people you know and people that are in the industries that you like as well. Exactly, Joe. Uh, you know, LinkedIn today is so so important, such a great tool. Right. Uh, because it can jog your memory. Because you can go search on companies and go, oh, there's Joe Davis. Oh right. my God, I forgot I he knew him. He knows something about broadcasting, <laughs> exactly. maybe. Exactly. Or flying, or yeah. you know, whatever. And so it's, it's, um, it's a great way of making that list of everybody that you know. It's not people who are your friends, necessarily. Right. It could be people you went to high school with, people loose you went to college. It doesn't have to be anything really right. people, structured. Right. People you stood on the sidelines when your kids were playing soccer. Right. Um, people you worked with. So neighbors. Neighbors. I mean, everybody. So just 500 people on that list get their names and phone numbers off of Google. All right. Important part of it. When you have that list all put together, this is the part that people fail on miserably. Yes. And that's the networking of those people and yes. what that requires. Yeah. You know, um, a lot of people think that since networking is a term that's right. being used, they now have to learn how to network. Well, Joe, we've been networking our entire life. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's Joe's, it's evolutionary. Joe's, Joe's holding this book. Yeah. I'm going, where'd you get that? <laughs> <laughs> as a kid, yeah. as a kid, we were networking. We didn't even know it. Absolutely. So, you know, so it's one of those things that we've done naturally our entire lives, but we didn't realize we were doing it. Yeah, that's awesome. Now, let's talk about, uh, when we talk about networking, how, how do we go about that? What are some of the important keys to it? You know, since we, maybe we should just kind of draw out an exact, you know, uh, example of how to do this a little bit. Because you, you mentioned the easy part. Right. Well, you know, it's always important to um, try to get other people's names and phone numbers from the people that you know. Okay. Because that's called a warm referral as opposed to a cold call. Right. Okay. And the nice thing about warm referrals is that that person receiving a call from you, since a person they respect referred you to them, they're going to try to do the best they can sure. um, to help you. And so you talk about the things that you do well and what, what it is that you would like to do and why it is that you're looking right now. Okay. And then the next step is start to start to talk in terms of their interests. All right. Because people like to talk about themselves and like to talk about yeah, their Yeah, you really want to engage them and exactly. listen, right? That's right. That's the important listen. part of this. Take notes. Because and what this is really about is showing that you are interested, and that's the that's that sort of non, there, there's a little bit more of a nonverbal cue there of, hey, wait a minute, this guy kind of likes what I'm doing. Maybe we've got something that fits this person. Right. Or maybe we could have something right. that fits this person. Yeah. So you're engaging them to engage you. Kind of an interesting way of thinking of it. That's right. Now, talk to me about the infomercial part of this, too. Well, the, the infomercial part is really kind of simple. It's, it's more just um, getting in front of that person and having um, a conversation for 20 minutes. Just ask for a 20-minute conversation. And during that conversation, listen to their needs, ask good questions, listen to their needs, but be prepared when you're listening to their needs to say, oh, you know, I had that kind of experience when I was here. Can you want to discuss that? At the end of 20 minutes, though, offer them the opportunity to cut it off. Right. Because that's what no you ask for. No one wants to listen to you go on for you know, an hour. Yeah, exactly. Right. And I had one candidate one time that, oh my gosh, I thought he would never leave the office. I thought the next morning I'd come back and he'd still be there. Yeah, he was already employed. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, offer the courtesy. They gave you 20 minutes of their time. Everybody's busy today. So make sure that you honor that 
and offer them the opportunity to end it right now. Absolutely. And they may say, well, no, I want to keep, you've brought up some points right. that are really interesting to me. But they also might invite you back, which is just as valuable. It's more valuable. Indeed. Well, these are some great ideas. Recruiter Guy Bill Humbert. And of course, many of these are found right here in the Recruiter Guy's Guide to Finding a Job. And I certainly enjoy having you here to explain some of them. Get out and recruit yourself a little bit by uh, you know, recruiting others to help you. And that's what this is that's really all what about. That's what all of, all of the re looking for a job is, is just finding other people to help you. Yep, engage. All right. Thanks, Joe. Thanks, recruiter guy Bill Humbert. We will be back with more, including Laura Dupuy with the Utah Council for Citizen Diplomacy. It's all coming up right here on the Mountain Morning Show after this quick commercial break.